This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial and in this lesson we're heading back to basics to continue our discussion on bins. We briefly talked about bins in our last basic tutorial and we talked about the new favorite bins feature inside of 8.2 as well as the new search feature where you can get in and search for bins. Now in this lesson, like I said, we're going to head back to basics. We're going to talk about getting in and organizing clips inside of your bins, your different bin views, and your bin settings in this tutorial. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's Command and Tab into Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna open a bin. What I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna hit Command and O on the Mac, Control and O on Windows. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I don't actually have any media in this project. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take media from a different project. And I'm going to take it simply from my stock footage folder right here, my stock footage project, because remember those folders actually represent different projects. And I'm just gonna choose the motocross bin right here. I'm simply gonna say open and you're gonna see the bin opens and I now have access to all of the clips in there. Now you're gonna see that by taking a look at these clips, I have the little master clip icon and right beside it, I have what looks like a little chain or a little link. What that represents is that all the clips that are in this bin have been AMA linked to. I didn't import anything, I just linked to them to get quick access to these clips. Okay, now once I have the bin open, this in general is the way things are gonna look when you bring in some clips into a bin. You're gonna see that we have a few things going on in here. Now, I wanna start out at the bottom, right down here, and I wanna talk about what these four things represent. We've got a little fast menu here that is a lot more in-depth that we're gonna get into in a later tutorial. But I wanna talk about these four icons right here. I've got the first icon, the second one that looks like four squares. I've got this one that looks like three lines, and then I have this thing called capture.1. So what do these represent? Well, the first three icons over here represent the different layouts that you can have inside of your bin. We have list view, which is our first button. I then have frame view, which is the next button. And I even have the option for storyboard mode. As you can see, I can get in and I can type detailed descriptions of each one of these shots. Now, to be perfectly honest, I don't really know anybody that uses this view. Now, I know there's gonna be people out there that use it. I'll be getting emails and saying, Kev, I use that view all the time. But for right now, I'm not gonna focus on this one. I'm gonna focus on really the two that everybody uses the most, and that is the list view right here and the frame view. Now, I think I wanna start out by talking about the frame view first. Now, as you can see, I have some clips in here and they have a green border around each one of them. But to be perfectly honest, these are actually a little bit small. It's kind of actually hard to tell what's going on inside each of these frames. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna increase the size of the bin here because of course we can get in and increase the size of these thumbnails and it's very simple to do. All I'm gonna do is simply press Command and L on the Mac, Control and L on Windows, L of course for larger. And as I do that, you're gonna see that we can actually make these fairly big. Now, of course, the problem that I have is, is that they don't exactly fill the window exactly as I'd like them to. I'd actually like them to pretty much, you know, sort of come over here, not stretch off the window and not be missing one right here. Well, how we can get in and organize these is actually very simple. You're going to see that with the bin open, I now have access to all of the different bin options up here at the bin drop down menu. And really the ones that we're going to focus on are right down here at the bottom. We have, of course, a line to grid. We also have fill window and fill sorted. What I want to do is simply fill the window and you can see that the clips have now been rearranged inside of the bin so that they all fit nice and evenly. Now you'll see that one of the clips is offline and actually that's because I went in and renamed this clip just because I wanted you to see how this is going to show up if you happen to have a clip that's offline in thumbnail view or in frame view. Now, something else is going on here. We have this highlight around each one of the clips, and in this case, the highlight is green. Well, what exactly does this green border represent? Well, there's actually some different colors in here that are gonna represent different types of clips or possibly even a sequence in your bin. 
Now, as you can see, the border around all of these clips is green. That green border represents that these are all master clips. If there was a blue border, that would represent pre-computes or source side motion effects. If it was dark green, it would represent subclips or grouped clips. If it was a red border, that would represent a sequence. And if it was purple, that would represent media files in the media tool. So as you can see, if I was to come to this bin, I was to simply navigate up here to clip and say new sequence, you'll see the sequence obviously has a red border because that is what it is supposed to have. Now, to be perfectly honest, this is a new feature in version, I believe, 8.1. And for me, I don't really care for having this green border. So how do I get in and remove that? Well, let's talk a little bit about the bin settings. We're going to get a lot more into settings in a later tutorial, but I want to talk specifically about the bin settings. So let's navigate over here to our project window. Let's come over here to settings and let's come down to bin. I'm simply going to double click on it. Now what I'm going to do here actually is I'm just going to move. I'm actually just going to let me just close that bin for a second here. Just so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on in our bin settings. Now, a few things that I want to point out in here. First and foremost, the autosave interval. How often do you want your bins to be saved when you're working? In this case, I have it set to 15 minutes because I'm not doing anything that's, you know, critical. If I was to have, you know, let's just say there was an issue, something crashed, something happened. I'm just going to leave it as 15 minutes, but obviously I encourage you to get in and shorten that up to be whatever you might want it to be. Now I'm going to jump down a little bit and I want to talk about the maximum files in a project's attic. Well, what is the attic? Well, the attic is basically a storage place where all of your auto saves are going to be saved to. Now you'll see right now the maximum number of files in any project's attic is a thousand different files. Now the maximum versions of a file is 50. So for example, if I come over here, let me just cancel this for a second. I'm just going to come back to the bins view here. If I happen to have a bin inside clips, I'm only going to have a maximum of 50 versions of this blue clips bin. Let's come back to our settings here for a second. Now obviously you can get in and change that to be whatever you want. In most cases, I don't want any more than 50 versions. What's important to keep in mind is let's say we have this hypothetically set to backup every, let's just say two minutes. If I have a maximum of 50 versions of a specific bin, what I'm basically going to have is I'm going to have a backup for 100 minutes with 50 different versions that are in there. Now, 100 minutes is basically an hour and 40 minutes. And obviously, you can see if we were to you know, extend that autosave to be five minutes, we're going to have that stretched out over a longer period of time. In most cases, I don't mess with the maximum files in a project's attic or the max versions of a file in the attic either. Now, of course, that does beg the next question. Where exactly is the attic? Well, it's very simple. On a Mac, what you're going to do is you're simply going to navigate to the Macintosh hard drive. You're going to come to Users. You're going to come into the, I sort of ruined it right there, into the Shared folder. You're going to come into the Avid Media Composer folder, and you'll see right here the Avid Addict, and there's all my projects right there. Now, of course, if you want to take a quick snapshot of that, no problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Command on the Mac here. I'm going to come to my Avid Media Composer folder. I'm simply going to click on it, and you can see that the attic is located inside of my computer right here, inside the Mac hard drive, in Users, in Shared, in Avid Media Composer. Now, I'm putting the location of the Windows version of the attic on the screen right now, so all my Windows friends out there can navigate to it very quickly and very easily. Okay, let's Command Tab back into Media Composer. And let's come back to our bin settings. You'll see next we can double click on an object to load it into the source or record monitor, or we can have it open in a new pop-up monitor. Very self-explanatory. You double click on a clip you want it to appear here, or do you want it to open in a new window? Now we talked about favorite bins in the last lesson where we we're doing our basic tutorials. And you'll see right here, we can actually tell Media Composer, do we want the favorite bin to be at the top of the project or the bottom of the project? Next, we can enable edit from a bin if we wanted to. We can always keep at least one version of a bin in the attic, and we can show local media icons as well. Now, next, this specifically refers to those borders that we were talking about before. You'll see that we can show the border colors, and we can use the color based on object type or use the clip color. Now, in most cases, like I said, for me, I don't even want to have this on at all. So what I'm going to do is simply disable that, I'm simply going to say OK. I'm going to come back to that bin, and you'll see that that border is now gone. OK. Now, a couple other things I want to talk about inside of Frame View right here. One of my favorite features 
inside of frame view is I do have the ability to select any one of these clips and simply hit the L key on the keyboard, which is the play key, and I can actually play this clip. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna double the speed by hitting it twice, or I can triple it by hitting three times, and you'll see that we can get a preview of exactly what's going on with this clip right from the bin. Now, something else I do wanna mention, a different setting that is actually in relation to what we have right here into our thumbnail view. Now, obviously every time we open a bin, all of these thumbnails are being cached onto the system. The only problem was in previous versions of Media Composer, any time that we closed a bin, all of that was wiped out. So every time, let's say you had a thousand different clips in here, every time you went into this bin, Media Composer would rebuild all of these thumbnails. Ah, well that's not the case anymore. Inside of version 8.2 of Media Composer, I'm gonna come back to the settings. Let's just scroll right down here and I'm gonna to come to the media cache option right here. You'll see that's the thumbnail cache that I can get in and set. Right now it sets the volumes, Mac drive, MC cache. I could flush that if I wanted to. In most cases, I leave that on an external drive because who knows how big that folder might be depending on how many projects I'm working on. But this is a great way to get in and quickly be able to go through and have any bin open in thumbnail view, literally, lightning fast. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cancel out of that and let's switch now from thumbnail view back to list view because there are some things that I wanna talk about inside of this view specifically because I like to work in this view and I use it all the time. So I wanna show you a few little cool tricks that you're gonna have at your disposal to keep the process running as smoothly as possible. Now, inside of list view, you'll see that I have all of the clips right here listed under the name and I have a few other columns here that give me more information about these specific clips. But the question is, how do I get in and tailor this however I want? Well, right away, I have the ability to get in and choose any of these columns that I want and move them anywhere that I might need them. I can rearrange these however I like. But to be perfectly honest, I need to get in and be more specific. Now, you'll remember down here I was talking at the bottom about these four icons, and I talked about list view, thumbnail view, and storyboard view. But I do have this other drop down here, and what this drop down represents is my different bin views. Now, these are standard bin views that ship with Media Composer when you launch it. But the question is, how do I get in and create just a basic one that I might want to work with? Because to be perfectly honest, right now, this is more information than I need. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna remove these bin views because I don't want any of them to begin with. And you'll see that inside of my settings, if I navigate right back up to the top here, here are these different bin views. So if I delete them, you'll see now if I come back to the dropdown, they're now all gone. So how do I get in and create a new bin view? Well, it's actually very simple. Let's create a basic one. What we're gonna do is navigate to the fast menu. I'm simply gonna click on it and I'm gonna come up to choose columns. Once I do that, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select everything and then I'm gonna select nothing. And let's choose a few different parameters in here that we would wanna see with our new clips view. So I'm gonna to wanna to see the duration, the end, and let's just choose the start as well. There we go. And you know what I think I'm also gonna do? I'm just gonna add the drive that these clips are on. All I'm gonna do now is simply say okay, and you'll see now I'm just given the bare minimum of what I might need to see when I'm working on a project. So what we're gonna do is navigate down to the bottom. I'm gonna click on the dropdown. We're gonna say save as. I'm gonna call this clips view. And you'll see as soon as I say okay, it's now gonna appear over here in my settings. So I could get in and create as many different views as I might need. Now something else I wanna show you before I wrap up this tutorial, cause this is again a very basic look at bins. We're gonna talk more about bins in the next lesson. But I wanna show you how you can get in and create your own columns. You know, maybe you wanna create a column that's gonna have the time of day that this footage was shot at. Well, that's very easy to do. All I'm gonna do is simply navigate right up to the top beside my name, my start, end, duration, and drive, and I'm simply gonna click right in there, and I'm gonna call this category time of day. Just like such. I'm simply gonna click enter. I can now adjust this column. Let's just move it over here, there we go. And now I can simply get in and say morning, let's say enter, and you'll see as soon as I say enter, it moves down to the next clip, say noon, and we're gonna say night. But what's very cool about this is that I wouldn't wanna get through and retype that every time. 
What if there was a way that I could get in and quickly just have sort of a shortcut to get in and switch between the parameters that I had already input? Ah, well, of course there is. All you need to do is simply hold Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows, and when you click on that open category, you'll see now that I have the option of the ones that I had already typed in. So I could say morning, again, night, again, noon, again, morning. And if I was to type a new one, let's just say I typed in dusk, and then I typed in dawn, you'll see now when I hold Option and click on it, I now have those options in here as well. And of course, when I'm done, what I would do is simply create a new view and call this, let's just say we're going to call this Clips View Time of Day, T-O-D. And I'm simply going to say OK. And now I can switch back and forth between my Clips View and my Time of Day view very quickly and very easily. OK, so we've now started to get rolling talking about bins. We've just given you a very introductory look at them. In the next lesson, we're going to get a little bit more in depth so you can really get in and organize your projects as detailed as you might need to. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.